wisdom nestled in my heart where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace. Harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth. There is one, the all in all. The truth that makes me free to be. I heed its every call. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find tis me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find tis me. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living Lifeline this evening. It's our last Thursday in the month, and this has now become a welcome practice. It's a joy for me to welcome each and every one of you this evening. We have an exciting topic and an ex even more exciting um, presenter from the worldwide um, cadre of ministers with Centers for Spiritual Living. And so without further ado, before we go any further, I'd like to invite our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to do our opening affirmative prayer. Thank you, Sandy, and a joy for me, friends, to add my own words of welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. We begin as all things begin with God. Please join me in this opening affirmative prayer. As we know together that there is only one, one God, one mind, one infinite intelligence, one presence, one power, one heart, one love, one one, one. There is only one of us here and it is God in all its radiance and its beauty. And so we know that everyone who is on this call this evening at this lifeline, this hour of connectivity, liberty, love and laughter is just imbued with all of the qualities of the God presence and the God power that knows no obstacles. I know for our guest that the infinite mind fills his consciousness with every idea he needs to lead us upwards and onwards into greater than we have ever experienced and that each of us has revealed to us that which we need to know, to understand, to grow in spirit and in truth. This is the truth which I celebrate and give thanks as I release it to law knowing that as we have spoken, it has already been fulfilled. And I give thanks that this is truly so. And so it is. Wow. Thank you so much, Reverend John. You know, friends, Lifeline came about about two, two years ago, uh, just when we were into the, the pandemic. And it, you know, there was a lot of this <clears throat> apparent discord and people were uncertain about what, what was happening around. And, and so we decided to um, do this particular exercise in an effort to really shift the consciousness to provide some spiritual tools and strategies to enable um, all of us to rise above and consciously respond to the challenges of this very special time and to support um, each of us um, in shifting from a fear-based consciousness or thinking to a faith-based consciousness. And we have had some wonderful times so far. And this evening, I know we're going to have just, if not an even more wonderful time. And it's now my absolute pleasure to introduce our very special guest. He is the public face and spiritual leader for Centers for Spiritual Living. And so we were just delighted to have him here. 
He leads spiritual retreats worldwide and is a prolific author of published spiritual articles and books through Penguin Random House and St. Martin's Press. He started his spiritual journey in the 1980s with Science of Mind classes in Hollywood, California, and has been CSL Santa Rosa's senior minister for over 10, 26 years. He received two honorary doctor degree, doctorate degrees from Centers for Spiritual Living. And in 2018, he was awarded our movement's cherished Ernest Holmes Award for exemplary demonstration of Dr. Holmes's teachings. He is passionate about education and is well known for sharing his curriculum and organizational resources with ministers nationwide. He served on the minister's ongoing education conference for 18 years and moved to provide spiritual support for peace officers in the tumultuous 1990s. At that time, he became a law enforcement chaplain. Ooh. Our guest lives in the beautiful wine country of Sonoma County, California. And each of us here has already invited ourselves to visit. Friends, I invite you to open your hearts and welcome Reverend Dr. Edward Bullion. Thank you so much, Dr. Sandy. Edward. Wonderful. Thank you, Reverend John, for welcoming me. And, and may, may I bring to you a greeting from your extended family across the world, Centers for Spiritual Living. How, what a, well, what a marvelous thing it is that we can be in each other's company all spread across the globe and studying the same teaching and celebrating the same divine presence. It gives me goosebumps to think of what we're doing today and how before this was not possible. Indeed. So I have a topic given to me by you, Reverend John. You are very <laughs> creative with words at New Year's revolution. You know that when I saw it, I didn't catch it. I, I thought New Year's resolution, of course, I missed the play on words. And therein is some of the teaching. When I am on automatic, I'm not paying attention and I slip into old habits. And so this idea of knocking myself out of the habit to think a new thought about an old practice, a new year's revolution. Because I notice I have these habits, these inclinations. One of my inclinations is to give the new year, January 1st, the power of renewal and a fresh start. I put all my energy on that. And what I, what I think may be more accurate is that the one creative power is ever active, ever renewing, always present in me, in creation. So here's a revolutionary idea for me. I probably don't have to wait for January 1. Indeed. <laughs> I could begin today, January 7th or June 4th or September 22nd because there is this everywhere presentness that wants to express itself. It kind of reminds me of the theme. I don't know if you take the Science of Mind magazine. Yes, we do. The theme there is um, everyday awe and wonder yes. for the whole year. And it's about how every day is chock full, filled up with awe and wonder and opportunity and not just one particular day. Mm. Uh -huh. And one of our tools, um, primary tools for nurturing this attitude of awe and wonder is, of course, our way of praying called spiritual mind treatment, in which we recognize that presence, consciously identify with it, then realize what that means, give, give thanks for it. And, and you know, you know the routine and then get going in the world. Now, I mention it because I prefer to do this kind of spiritual practice first thing in the morning mm -hmm. before the day takes hold of me and leads me down the garden path. Do you remember when we used to have um, radios <laughs> with dials on them? 
yes, yes. Some of them, you know, we even had them in our cars. And then so we had to tune them into the right frequency to get the good stuff. And then if we traveled far enough away, we would sometimes lose the signal and then had to retune. Otherwise, the radio would become static. The connection got weak. So my morning prayer to me is like tuning into the right frequency, the right outlook. And I notice that during the day, I got to keep refreshing my outlook as the day progresses. See, this has to do with why New Year's resolutions don't last. Mm. So, and maybe it's why the, the Bible suggests that uh, we must pray without, without ceasing. ceasing. In other without words, ceasing. to me, we must keep refining, keep tuning in. And, and it, even the Bible even says, and, and to give thanks in every circumstance so that we do not extinguish the spirit. And that Beautiful. we keep, you know, you've got to keep investigating everything and look for spiritual truth and then to tune into what is good so that's my business i gotta keep my mind <laughs> tuned in to divinity and then let that focus that vision reveal something for me to do now if i do it the other way around if i start making plans first that's when I get into trouble. And, and, and it's all through our teaching. You know, our teaching, it says, we believe that heaven is within us, just like the master teacher Jesus said. We believe heaven is within us and that we experience this heaven to the degree that we become conscious of it. So I must get myself conscious of heaven. So now, back to January 1st. When I set myself up, with an artificial timeline. Mm -hmm. January 1st is when I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And that's often when I slip back into going to sleep because I didn't start with tuning in correctly. So what I was mm. doing, I was setting a goal. I made a plan and you know, goals and plans. Mm -hmm. You got to support them with willpower. And that's not what I'm, a, that's not my business. I'm not in the business of human potential and uh, motivation and goal setting and plans. That's great. I've got no problem. I am interested in tuning into the right state of mind, the right frequency, and then to let that reveal a path for me to go in you know my friend sent me one of these you know these things on the internet a meme the memes and and, and it says that the memes. <laughs> <laughs> it says i am opening a gym called resolutions it will have exercise equipment for the first two weeks and then it turns into a wine bar for the rest of the year <laughs> This is what happens when we set ourselves up making goals and setting artificial <laughs> timelines. So, so what is going to work better for me is let me start every day new. Let me tune in again every day into life. Let me every day, first thing in the morning, before the world gets me, before the news gets me, let me get excited and connected and synced to its splendor. Let me be dazzled by that presence there. And then let me watch carefully. Where does it lead me? Because this practice turns life into an adventure then the goals that I make are rooted in creative consciousness. Then the resolutions I make didn't come from my willpower and my ego mind. They came from the whispering of the divine in me. It's telling me where to go and it always will. You know, that's why, that's why it says, you know, in the, uh, I forget where it says, 
I have not seen nor ear heard, nor ear heard the glory that God has in store for those who love Christ Jesus. Now, in our way of speaking, we would say it similarly. I, you cannot see, you cannot even be aware of the glory that is in store for you when you give yourself to the consciousness of what Christ's consciousness is unity with the divine. So let me start there. Let me come there in the morning and then follow and listen and be led because that's when I experience uh, the extraordinary happening all the time. So to me, I'm not so fond of New Year's resolutions anymore. To me, what I'm about is every day resolving to be in spirit because to me, spirituality is the everyday realization of what you and I, what I am already you know, spirituality to me is about realizing that there is a butterfly inside of that caterpillar and that there is a mighty oak inside of that acorn. acorn. Yes, that there is an orchard inside that tiny apple seed, that there is power and possibility in you and that there is awe and wonder in the simplest things. So then I don't have to try and be too grand and too bigger than I can just be right where I am, start with that great commandment to put God first. And then with all your heart with all your everything and then say where, where is this going where is it going to take me and i'll tell you something it hasn't disappointed me yet this mm -hmm. practice uh, well let me be more honest sometimes <laughs> i do, sometimes i do not want to go where the divine is taking me and i fight but you know what i mean do you, and so i'm okay. learning to be more um, obedient to the practice and that can mm -hmm. be done by being relentlessly curious about the divine mm. relentlessly curious about life and there's my question there, maybe this is my new year's resolution and it's a revolutionary idea i want to stay curious about life i do not want mm. to lose interest. So I think that's what I have to say about the topic you have assigned for me, Reverend John. Do you have <laughs> something to add? <laughs> I just, yes, I just want you, I'm listening to you and I'm on the edge of my seat because I'm thinking about the master teacher saying, except you become as little children, you yes. cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And children have that curiosity, that, yes. that excitement about discovering what's next. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, it can be in watching a caterpillar um, you know, become a butterfly, it can be in watching an, an anthill, can be in the simplest thing, or it can be in skyscrapers and, and amusement parks that take your breath away. But yeah. they have a curiosity and a, 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 a joy in living. Isn't that, that something? Is just in pure connection with spirit. It is so wonderful. I mean, think about this. It is, I mean, it's ordinary. We should take it as ordinary, but it's miraculous that here we are, you and me and all the people on this call, are called together across time and space. space yes. by, how is it that we are here for this moment? Where else would I rather be? Let me be curious about this and engaged in this, and then the, the blessings pour out of it. See, I don't want to miss a moment of being here with you this yeah. is this is where it's at there's nowhere else to be yes. wow this moment yes this moment you know yes. what um what strikes me too that to be in wonder yes. we have to be in the moment and yes. and the, a big part of the revolution is that um it's revolutionary to not be thinking about you know what i used to was yeah what happened before what what i should have done you know if only then so and so then i would have and it's also revolutionary to not have to consider what's going to happen you know um what what's what's tomorrow going to look like suppose i don't have what if you know that um yeah. place of anxiety that, that we get into and and when we stop to look at a sunset when we stop to to take in um, what you know, any of the fine moments that present themselves to us, we can only 
experience the joy and wonder of spirit a hundred percent no it's so easy to, to move miss. away from that past and that future yeah it's so present. easy to miss it the beauty of it where especially like yeah. the demands of modern life yeah. faster faster more efficient you know um I remember speaking at my own center about a time when I was living in Hollywood and I used to drive from my, the suburbs into my work. And then one day my car broke down and I had to walk. And that's when I discovered Hollywood. LA is not a pedestrian friendly city, but I also discuss, discovered something else that because I was walking, I now saw things I had never seen before. Mm neighborhood um, libraries where people were sharing their books, uh, neighbors taking out their fruit and sharing it one house to the other, plants that I didn't know even grew. And so the fast pace of getting to where you're going, sometimes the rest of the beauty of creation is a blur. And oh my mm. goodness, I, I remember that moment from time to time because I can slip back into automatic you know yes instant instantly and then i wake up tomorrow and say, oh my god that might have been a miracle but i was too busy being efficient yes <laughs> Doc, dr edward you mentioned as you mentioned walking and noticing plants that you never knew mm -hmm. um, can you say a little bit about the law of growth because i think you know if if i want spinach or um you know peppers sweet peppers and I plant them, I'm going to get them in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. But if I want uh, a breadfruit tree or an avocado tree, uh, it's going to take time to give me the harvest that I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the waiting for the big dream, um, we become impatient. And our founding minister, Dr. Elmo, used to say, don't pull up the, the sapling to see if it's growing. You, know, you don't dig up the seed once you plant it, you know, you, yeah. you water it with love and appreciation. Yes, exactly. So, it, well, human beings, we are very self-important, right? We Aren't think we? <laughs> we know the correct timing for everything. So I, I made my demand on the universe. Where is it? I need it now. So I've had to learn to accept that perhaps my human perspective might be limited. Yep. Maybe something is actually happening on, at, on the unseed side, side of life, because that is how it is with seeds. I love that metaphor. You know, you put the seed in the soil. We don't know what is the mysterious message that the soil Interaction. That's is. Right. We don't know. And we don't know how, when it's coming. So I can tell you that there is that so many people in our movement, maybe even in your community, I know certainly in other communities who have uh, said a, an affirmative prayer, a spiritual mind treatment for something that they did not get yet. And then, they, then this is the danger. What is wrong with me? Yes. What is wrong with the system? What is wrong with the prayer? Oh, immediately we go. So I, I say to myself, look, if, for example, I remember when I was single and I wanted to not be single. I can't tell you how many spiritual mind treatments I did for a partner. You know, so many. And at some point I was going to say, um, I give up. Or yeah. I'll, so this will never happen. And I got a little bitter, you know, I'm thinking now I'm getting too old for this to be fun anymore. <laughs> and so I've got all the complaints. In it. And then, of course, when I, I met somebody that I fell in love with, then it made all that waiting worthwhile. Mm, that's so, when you, get, you pick your first avocado. That's right. So now my mantra is... <laughs> I may, my eyes may not see it, but something is moving on the spiritual side of life. Always. 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 There's, Always. Not, there's nothing yeah. we can do to stop yes. it. Yes. And perhaps you, know, you water that seed just by giving thanks for the harvest that you know must come. You must reap those fruit. You know, I think as I get a little wiser, I realize there's something to not being desperate. <laughs> clinging interfering so you know the whole idea of spiritual mind treatment is to arrive at a place of openness and receptivity so you know like like you talked about your founding myths you don't go to the soil and dig it up and say what is going on here why is the seed not germinating 
Mm-hmm. You just leave it alone. It's the same with, you know, you take a, a, a do people still write letters? But remember when we used to write letters, we put the let the stamp on, we address it, we put it in the mailbox, and you go away. It's done. You don't wait to see with the deliver the mail person is coming. Did they take it out? Is mine included? You don't follow them to the sorting facility, you know. So I yeah. notice I have got a little bit of a control issue. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I want I want a, I want a report every day on how is this coming my way. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And over to you, God. But but do it this way. Yeah. And so there's no joy. <laughs> yeah. There's no joy in it for yeah. me. So I. I um I, I I really take to heart this let go. Mm-hmm. The the last part of our, our prayer, let it go. Yes. And then Release. keep moving, yeah. Keep moving. And you know, I and, and the higher the stakes, the more difficult it is to do that, right? Like if if I have a loved one in hospital it, and you tell me to let go, I'm gonna say, What are you talking about? And that's where community comes in. Uh, yeah. So somebody else on my behalf can hold the prayer and release it when I am doing what I'm supposed to do, love and care about my friend in the hospital or my family member Mm -hmm. so we are not ever so inhuman as to say you know just it's just that easy just change your mind oh if only it were that easy we would be so wealthy wouldn't we yes (laughs) indeed indeed it's it's, it's really awesome that you 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 shared that um part of your journey because i could say ditto 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 yes and and the wait just seems forever yes but it then brings up the business of trust and faith. Yes. Um, you know, we, 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 we yearn, yearn to have faith. Yes. We want to have faith. We want to surrender and let go and let God. Um, and then, you know, the human part of us, the default, mm. will mm. sort of go out in the garden and dig up the seed mm. and, you know, be anxious about it. Because it's taking too long. Mm-hmm. So how do we? I mean, and we know we know the answer to this, but please reinforce for us. How do we, as students of the science of mind, and anyone else who is open and receptive to, you know, the, the desire for a new job, for a partner, for a home, for um, healing of a particular condition? How do we deepen our faith? What can we do to really, really just acknowledge and see spirit as all that there is? Oh, Sandy, what a beautiful topic. Look, sometimes what happens in our movement is we become more interested in outcomes, deliverables, than we do in the presence of God. So when people say, I want to have more faith, what they're saying is, I want to have more faith in the outcome. I want to have more trust in the outcome. And I'm saying to them, no, let us have more faith in the divine, no matter what the outcome. So then whether shall I flee from your spirit? I can't, whether I'm without a job, whether I'm without a partner, whether this is happening or that. I am with you and you with me. I'm talking poetically about the divine. So I want to develop my faith in the divine regardless of outcomes because many times, well, I have desired something that was not good for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've really wanted it. <laughs> and really wanted it. And if you had got it, it would have been devastating for you. Yeah. And, you know, I, I can say that um, not... Not getting what I want sometimes has been the most, you know, the most um, beneficial growth factor for me, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and even in the very difficult times in my life in uh, where I felt um, like a spiritual dry spell, what I wanted more than an outcome is to, to know that the spirit lives in me and I in it. So we are to develop trust in the divine and not on the circumstances so that I do not become too fixed. Fixated on, on outcome. What it looks like. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I mean, we cannot say to somebody who is, had a, a, a surgery that didn't get go well, well, you obviously don't have faith. Mm. We cannot say that. 
So it's the person who goes through the surgery that doesn't go well, who stays in the heart of God. That is the successful one, not the one who demonstrates a car. That's just the icing on the cake. Okay, so you know, you know I, my personal revolution is I have stopped praying for things. How about my prayer that? now is for just oneness mm -hmm. with that presence and power. And you have done something for me this evening. I don't think you even know how powerful it is. That idea of starting the day. No, I pray very early. I get up at four in the morning and I have a prayer list of people I pray for by name. Mm -hmm. But it's not the first thing I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start praying, do my first prayer as I open my eyes before I get out of bed. Because that's where you tune in. That's correct. And I really believe that, that, you know, I pray very soon after that, but I'm going to do my first prayer while I'm still under the sheets. I love that. And you know, I, you reminded me that sometimes I do want something. I want a car, let's say, for example, and I've learned behind that car is a quality of being that I'm really mm -hmm. seeking to have. That's what, what is, that's what is driving you. Yes. If you pardon the, the metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's driving you. Just like you to do that. So yes, exactly. So I asked myself, if I, I let me imagine, use this beautiful imagination that has been given to me, let me put myself some sh very close time in the near future. And I imagine I already have that car. What will I be experiencing? Mm -hmm. Is it peace? Is it confidence? Maybe it's safety, then I know that is what is calling me. Because truly, if I had peace, safety and confidence, do I care what form it comes to me in? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Would you settle for a layer jet? <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. Curry knows exactly what you need. Mm. Yeah. So um, just, just perhaps some clarity for our yeah. listeners and yeah. perhaps myself. Yes. Um, let, uh, let's talk a little bit about goals. Yes. You know, I think it was from Alice in Wonderland where they said, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. <laughs> so we set goals i mean the church will have goals that we want to yes. um, increase our membership by so much and yes we know we have the spiritual vocative and we know that if we are who we are being will create the vibration that will attract people to us so but 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 we are now looking at creating goals for um as part of this spiritual prosperity adventure that that i was sharing with you a little bit about how do we um, sort of uh, create that balance between I set a goal because it is something to work towards. Yes. And at the same time, just recognizing and knowing that um, if I can think about the being of, that I want behind the goal, that if, you know, getting this car or this partner or this new job will, will make me feel or I will feel so and so. How do we create that, that alignment and, um, between the two ideas? You know, we were chatting earlier on and we mentioned Simon Sinek and he asked the, talks about the why, get clear on your why, and that's it. So I'm setting my goals. I, I want to pause and ask, why this goal? What's the why about this goal? Because the why can't be to get more members. That's just a goal. So why do I want to get more members? So as I dip into that, it's going to bring me closer and closer to the mission of this ministry. What is the reason for your existence? Because getting new members is just uh, one of the ways of enhancing that mission, you see. So that's a very, very important part is why am I, why do I want, okay, New Year's resolution, a goal. I want to lose 20 pounds. Why? Because that will take me somewhere. Well, because I want, because, um, oh, I have to think about that. Maybe it's because I, I don't, I, I want to fit in. You know, does, does the losing of the goal, the losing of the weight bring me closer to my spiritual mission? Because if the losing of the weight is for me to embrace myself with love and holiness, it's a, then it's a good goal. If it's to fit into society's idea of beauty, then I, can, then I got a problem. And that's when it doesn't uh, always 
work out for me. So there's nothing wrong with goals, right? Oh, they're absolutely wonderful. In fact, um, you know, the story of the grasshopper and the ants, if you're just playing around all day and you don't pre prepare for the, the lean months, you might find yourself outside of the cold. I do, cold, I like to plan. I love a good plan. Um, I, I want to be- first. Yes, there you go. That's you, you said you took the words, the vision Sorry, again, first. Reverend John? The vision first, you know, when yes, we were, we, yes, were yes. we were producing our strategic plan, we visioned first. Yes. It's yes. the vision before we start setting the goals for the plan. Yes. There was, and we did it last night in the in this spiritual prosperity mm -hmm. workshop. We visioned our, our future. Yes. You you know, the, the goals, I, I think for me, they must come out of the highest consciousness I can attain. Because here's the thing I know about consciousness work. My job is every day to get the highest consciousness I can attain. And then that consciousness does the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. it, it brings to me mm. what needs to be brought to me. So if I over plan, I can sometimes get in the way of that work. Now, you know, if I, uh, if I have, I'm going to build a house and I have no plan, I could create chaos. So there's a time and a place. I, yeah, I do want to have a strategy, but I also want to, even when I'm laying the foundation, to be in that world in between that I am open and available to intuition. So the person who is walking the spiritual path must have an appreciation for ambiguity, contradiction, yes. <laughs> paradox, all these things that show up and, and the ability to, yes, I have a plan. Let me breathe. Did it change today? Mm -hmm. You know, like, so I, I don't do well in, in an environment where there's hard deliverables and you got to stick to the plan because I know mm. life, life is not like, ask anybody who's been a parent, huh? Yes. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you, you think you know. But you don't know. Mm, okay. You're just going for the journey. You bought a ticket some point and you're and the train left the station and you better enjoy yeah. the ride. Lovely metaphor. Lovely, lovely. Um, uh, Sandy, I, have, I think there are some comments. I was, in the chat. To, I was just about to ask Steve or, or you know to see what 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 are what are our listeners saying? Uh, I'm let me see. Um, can you just um, I'm not seeing the message. Can you just share them with me, Vance or Steve, please? I'm not seeing the messages on my screen here. You never. More, more, um, more just comments rather than questions. Um, one is impatience is an indication of being not tuned into the right frequency. And Reverend Dan also said she, she resonated with the point about the mm -hmm the right frequency. Carol Campbell, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing balance as important as an important part of liberty in any and every situation. And balance is that sweet spot, right, between yes. effort and surrender. Yes. Ooh. Oh, that's beautifully said. That's beautifully said, Carol. Balance is that sweet spot right between effort and surrender. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, and um, still a no. you know, in the Buddhist tradition, the role of attachment or clinging um, is where the trouble is. And so I look for that when I am obsessive about the outcome. Mm -hmm. And I, I am trying to learn to be less clingy less obsessive which is very difficult because i love this world i mean i love gadgets i love people i love experiences and sometimes i want them desperately but i notice um how i can get myself into disappointment when i don't get what i want and also how i can sometimes not notice what i received instead mm -hmm. mm. yes interesting Yes, there is such a, a wonderful um, practice that I learned. I, I, I make my plan and then I come back to the present. So the, the plan gives me focus, but I come back to the present yeah. because in the present, I might be guided to move in a different direction from the plan. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Right. Yep. So, so yes, the plan is important, but I just love what you said, Carol, because I will make the effort to achieve the goal, but I also have to let go and let it happen. So that that sweet spot is really, really very powerful. And back to that first prayer, that first tuning in on the dial, mm -hmm. Father, show me what I can bring to life today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, in the chapter, I wish I had the Science of Mind textbook, in the chapter on successful living, Dr. Holmes says very clearly, you know, this Science of Mind is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Mm -hmm. And he says in there that the only true prayer, and this is a shock to some people when they hear it, <laughs> the only true prayer is, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And then to understand that the will of the divine is what we are learning to expand our awareness of. And that speaks to Anne's question, how do we deepen that awareness? Well, it's a, it's a forever process mm -hmm. because we are attempting to deepen our awareness of that which is infinite. That yes. which is beyond name, that which is, is beyond all qualities and yet is the source of all qualities and so we start wherever we are every day and to the best of our ability we describe to ourselves that which cannot be described and then we start again tomorrow. beautifully put beautifully put you know i often say dr edward if you're a doctor they have a language that they speak a vocabulary that they use if you're an architect they have a vocabulary and a yeah. language that they speak if you're a historian they speak a language yeah. you know right. you can go on if you are a, a student of truth mm -hmm. and you are, you are on a journey of deepening your relationship with the infinite, there is no language to describe it because it's, it's infinite. And we're yeah. trying to use limiting human expressions mm -hmm. to describe something that is beyond description, yeah. beyond imagination. It yeah. is so awesome in its, in its yeah. awesomeness. Yeah. I think it was Reverend Elmer who um, added the addendum to the prayer. I mean, not 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 in any kind of formal way, but you know. So I want to have a red car. So in the prayer, I do what I need to do and pray about a red car. But the addendum is this or something better, yeah. because my finite thinking will picture a red car. But the the at the deeper level of my, my consciousness, um, spirit knows what is more in alignment with who I am. Mm. So that this or something better has always been a good guide for That's me. That's beautiful. Yes. And, you know, I'm remembering also now that there is a lovely technique when I'm very attached to that red car, whatever it is, you know, the thing that I really am fixated on. What can I do to lessen that obsessiveness? This is a very successful practice. Begin to pray exclusively for other people. Mm. 30 days. Ooh, oh my I goodness. I mean, I just make up 30 days arbitrarily, but you know, for an extended period of time, when you find you're feeling very, whatever it is, because don't you know mm -hmm. that prayer for other people is for yourself, right? And so if you, Reverend John, say to me, you know, I would like you to pray for, you know, uh, a sense of wholeness, I have no problem doing that because I'm not wrapped up in whatever the condition is. I can do that for you. And then if Sandy asks me for prayer very soon, I am vibrating at the level of the heart's desire for all these people. I'm having a love affair. And don't you know, it's as if I am opening my own heart to the experience that is resides in there too. So when I'm fixated on something, I pray for other people. Love that. That's Love powerful. That. Absolutely powerful. Wow. Anything else in the chat, Stevie? Um, Vance? You know what I've found sometimes too? When you do yes. that, uh, uh, Dr. Edward, somebody comes to you and says, I, I, I want you to pray for me. Um, and you say, yes, what, uh, what do you want me to pray of? And they say, I want a red car. Because <laughs> it always mirrors. Yes. Yes. What has been, you know, and you think to yourself, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something? Absolutely. Well, you know, I think it may be the case that we all 
want well, the imagine. same thing. We just want one thing. Yes. And we and it, you it could say it like this: We want to come home. Yes. Mm. We want to come home to the divine yeah. and we think it is a car and we think it is a health and we think it is peace in the world. And I think it's a it, partner. We think it's, yeah. All the things. And you know, that may, and all of these things are good and we deserve to have them. That's wonderful. The reality is that if we had a clear sense of what is alive in us, all of that would be irrelevant. Because, mm -hmm. you know, um, we were talking about earlier about you know wealth and and that saying money can't buy you love or happiness there's something to that joy comes from knowing who you are yeah and you can have that joy with or without um a lot of means i mean i have traveled the world over and i see more joy in simpler cultures than I do in highly developed yes. cultures. And I've For always sure. tried to figure that out. I mean, here there are people that are very, very well provisioned. They've got everything. And there's such a high degree of depression and frustration yes. and a yes. lack of connection to the family unit. To this. And then I see some Times the opposite. It's not, you know, it's not one size fits all. But I, it has taught me again that joy, which is another synonym for the divine, is present and available in its full form all the time, no matter where I am. Even though I think I need an iPhone to get it. Mm. <laughs> got you. Got you. Um, and you don't need an iPhone to talk to the divine. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, you speak about family. Can you say a little bit about how, you know, so I am on the path, like, you know, and um, a family member, a spouse, a, a sibling, a, a, a child, an adult child, um, they think differently, they feel differently, they, there's a, a, a pushback and a different energy, a different thinking with that family member. How do we maintain our focus, our, our faith, our balance, keep the sweet spot um, mm -hmm. with the type of distraction that might come from persons who are close to us in our lives? Well, you could do what I did. You know, I got up and moved to another continent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you took yourself with you. But here's the, exactly, here's the problem. Wherever you land, that dynamic reproduces itself. Yes. Yep. So Until you learn the lesson. Well, yeah, you see, the thing about people is that we are weird and diverse. We don't agree. And, and the closer people are to us in blood, children, cousins, they get closer until it's your mother and your father, the more they have a way into us, they can get to us just like that. Yep, yep, they can push your buttons. You know, I guess that's why it says in the Bible, honor thy mother and father, because it's the, it can be the hardest thing to do when they mm -hmm. disagree with you. Mm -hmm. So it's a journey of learning to duplicate the nature of the divine while having good boundaries and good listening skills. So it's like this, you open your eyes when you're born and class starts. The curriculum starts, you're on the path of learning to express your highest and best. And if you've got family, you know, you're going to have some extra credit because family is interesting. And you don't, you don't need family how to find people in life who have a different opinion. You know, across the world, people are uh, divided uh, from liberal to conservative, from religious to irreligious, from this to that. And it's a constant opportunity to learn how to speak to each other in a way that does not betray our spiritual belief. Mm -hmm. and our yeah. own values yes and that's why the master teacher jesus said to his students by this shall all people yeah. know that you are my disciples by what by how you treat each other 
by Absolutely. how you love one another. So people ought to be able to look at us here at the Temple of Light, CSL. And just by the way we treat each other, they should understand what our faith tradition is. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. It's so it's difficult. Like a difference too, because you know, if if the human, you know, if every one of us is striving to 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 evolve, to realize the divine, then if if I see someone close to me who is in a space where they are, you know, their their kindness, their goodness is resonating with that in in me, I'm going to be one. I'm going to want to be like them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I want um, to make a comment on the other side of that, if I may, Dr. Edward and Sandy, and it, it is this, uh, in my experience, we, we so often want to make people be like us. <laughs> you know, my fair lady, why can't a woman be more like a man? You know, um, <laughs> sometimes we are addicted to people being, you know, and we want it for their own good, you know, so mm -hmm. I never forget um, this little girl, um, her mother said to her, well, well if I were you, I wouldn't wear that that dress to church. And she said, but you are not me, mommy. <laughs> I am me. Of course, she got smacked for being in, uh, <laughs> insubordinate. But, you know, we're always trying to fix people mm -hmm. to fit our paradigm of what we think is good. And I, Dr. Emma used to say the way to get over that is to stop labeling. Yes. Don't label anything or anyone, neither good or bad. Don't label. Don't put, attach labels to people. Yes, it's very interesting because it seems like we can be in a constant argument with reality. Reality <laughs> is from the oneness comes the diverse. There are no two things that are the same. But now I'm arguing with it, but now I want you to talk like me. I want you to think like me. I want you to yes. look like me. And I don't trust anybody who doesn't look like me. Now I think the ones that look like me are more superior than the ones that, it's like, oh my gosh, it's very exhausting maintaining all of that. When <laughs> yes. re reality is from the one come the many, you cannot fight with that. You know, the, the Jamaican national motto is out of many, one people. Oh, I love that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're there with the diversity. We need to improve it in some areas, but mm -hmm. um, we're working on that. Well, we're almost at the top of the hour. Yes. And, um, we, need to check in the our, we need to check in with our um, other folks who are in, in cyberspace and in... Oh, I see. Comments. Michael Michael says, it sounds like you're starting to address the saying that God has a purpose for you, but not a plan. Please elaborate on the difference. Yes. So the, a purpose has many potential possible plans. Mm. So you can fulfill your purpose wherever you go and whatever you do, even if you change plan midstream. You know, if you become a musician or a ballet dancer or a construction worker, your purpose can still be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So that for me is the difference. Now, if I start off with a plan first, my plan is to become a plumber, but I didn't check with my purpose. And so the plumber makes me rich. I become rich, but I didn't get whatever it is that is in my heart to express. Maybe it's art. So that's the difference. Start first with the purpose and then whatever plan you make is going to be rooted in your purpose. Yeah. And plans can change. Yes. Uh, but your purpose, if, it is, if, if it's in line with the divine, will drive you. Yes. Yes, it's, uh, it's the concept of, like in the Hindu tradition, duty. It's not a correct word to translate dharma, but this idea of the, the rightness of your being. Of your being, yes. Because from that, there is something for you to do in this world, and you can do it in a number of different ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Any other comments? Um, is in the paradox of manifestation, when do we learn to stop physical effort and dwell in no effort of realization? Oh. Every time we do a spiritual mind treatment, every single time, we, the, the idea is to cease efforting by the time we get to the end of the spiritual mind treatment. Oh. So, struggle. yeah. Yeah, and I, I say that with a lot of compassion because I struggle a lot. So I, this is a message to myself, you know. When, when I'm done with, when I'm done, sometimes I'm done with my spiritual mind treatment and I can just say to myself, 
you didn't get there. You know, Edward, you need to do that one again. So I understand this is a, a progression. And if I persistently cannot get out of the struggle, I, I get help. I go to somebody else. Yes, yes. And that's the value of having a practitioner, um, a spiritual oh. coach, oh, yes. somebody uh, who, can, who can take the high watch for you when your oh. face is down in the mud and you can't see the blue sky. Oh, and I'll tell you, uh, this is controversial, what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> my practitioner, I choose practitioners who do not know me or not because I don't want somebody who cares about me. <laughs> Because yeah. it's, it's too easy for Personally. me to, yes. yeah, I can rope them into my story, you know. I, so I yes. don't, I do not want a practitioner that I go and have, go to movies with or have lunch with. I mean, some people do, but for me, I need that person to be clear. So that when That's I wonderful. tell them, yeah, I tell them my sob story, they can't buy it, you know. I, I depend on them. And that is a dilemma of leadership, isn't it? Because yes. people tell you what they think you need to know yes. or, or what will please you. Oh. So you have my deep sympathies. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I will put you on my prayer list. You are welcome. <laughs> you are welcome to have my job any moment. Oh, this, is, this is absolutely amazing. Um, oh, we could go on for the whole afternoon. We could have another hour, Dr. Edward, a whole hour and longer. I have um, one final I, question for Dr. Edward, and it yes. is... I can answer it immediately. Down. Yes, I'd like to come to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> that goes without saying. <laughs> no further questions, Mirella, <laughs> as we say in the courts. <laughs> I just wondered what was the high point of this evening for you. Yes, good, good question. Thanks, beloved. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, from the minute of the invitation to the pre-technical run through the the graciousness and kindness with which the whole crew has welcomed me to the point where I feel like I just grew in family. Oh, that's what that's that's the highlight for me. Wow. So though wow. I say jokingly I want to come to Jamaica, I feel like my heart is already there. Oh, how wonderful. We kind of have that. We, we have to put that up. more than our bucket list. We, yeah. we definitely, most definitely. We plant that seed, Dr. Edward. Yeah. I just um, want to thank you for, thank first you. and foremost, your authenticity. I mean, you, you just speak from your heart. It's, it's so gripping for me personally that, you know, there is no mask. And, you know, I'm, I'm very into the business of yeah. masks now because of, because of the, the COVID protocols. But yes. you just come with your heart wide open. And for me, speaking personally, that um, imperative of beginning your day by tuning in, because when you go through the day, you are off, off channel so often, not because of any fault of yours, but you, you come out of, out of um, the radius of, of, you know, the tuning into God. So thank you for that. And thank you for being, thank you for being our spiritual leader. Thank you for being the light that you are. And yes, you can come to Jamaica anytime. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I'm really thrilled to be here with you today. I think they're going to ask you to press out, oh. um, Dr. Edward, please. All right. Then let <laughs> us... Let us take a moment then to turn within. And each one of us in our own way to turn our attention to that which cannot be defined and describe it as best we can. Thinking of those words that elevate, eternal, immortal, everywhere present, infinite, I recognize that as the foundation of my being and as the only thing that is going on here where I am. And here where I am is at the center of the divine universe, meaning it is where every single person is. And through this, our shared heritage, we are one. And so though time and space may separate us in consciousness, a deep bond of love and recognition and familiarity fosters so that wherever we go in the days to come, we remain united in the sense of family and belonging and creativity.
And in gratitude for this and trusting this connection, I release this word into that aspect of the divine that we call the law that reminds us that as it is spoken, it is done. And so I say, and so it is. And so it beautifully is. Wow. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been wonderful. Moderator?